Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so for this week, uh, we wanted to re review the uh, impact analysis uh, spreadsheet that was set up uh, after, after last week's call. Uh, and this was basically a way to kind of capture, you know, different people's thoughts on what, what is important. Um, and uh, so thanks to uh, Jim for suggesting it and thanks to Harry for, for setting it up. Uh, so we, we basically listed out all the different uh, features that were suggested, right? Uh, in, in the previous meetings. And then we had scores from different people. Uh, this was posted on, I think on the, was, uh, at least on the Slack channel. So we have, uh, you know, folks from the steering committee who added their thoughts, as well as a number of other folks from the community who added it. And you can still go in, go in and add it after this meeting as well. It's onyx.ai slash impact uh, is the short link uh, to get to this uh, spreadsheet. You can add your own column there. So one of the things we noticed is there are a number of features where everyone seems to agree it's either really important or it's not important at all. Uh, and so, you know, there are some things like, um, you know, reducing the number of primitive ops or improving the tutorials on model zoo, uh, you know, expanding the model tests on all the model zoos. You know, everyone seems to say that these are really important uh, and they get the highest score here. Um, so those are things that we just need to do uh, and we need to figure out the plan for how to get, get it done. Uh, working with the SIGs that are responsible for those areas. Um, there are a few others that we noticed where, um, you know, it's kind of a, you know, bipolar uh, a reaction from the community. For example, you know, pre-processing, there are some really high scores or some really low scores. Uh, I think uh, format for op reference implementation is another one where we have a couple of ones, a couple of threes. Um, so it's kind of split, um, uh, you know, across the board or on opposite ends. Um, so we wanted to use a little bit of time to talk about the ones that are split uh, and, and, you know, get more discussion on that, on those. And then I think um, it, it's probably, if we have time, it's also useful to talk about the next steps for the ones that we feel are, are important. The ones that we've kind of unanimously agreed are, are important, we should figure out the next steps for. Um, does that sound like a plan? Anything else that people want to make sure we cover today? Um, one suggestion is um, also if you look at the average, uh, I think we need to kind of think about how we want to set up the criteria for which one we think that is the high. So obviously three is, a, is the highest one, but we need to give like a little bit of a fuzzy boundary in terms of um, what we consider is quote unquote important. So um, that's one suggestion. We, we should try to figure out what actually, uh, what's the, the kind of the, um, the range that is acceptable as like a, uh, considered to be high priority, I guess, or high impact. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, uh, I mean, I was probably thinking to sort it, uh, you know, in reverse and descending order, and then uh, it basically worked down the list. And then so right now, it's probably anything above a 2.5 is 2.5 or higher is probably high. Yeah, that's kind of uh, what I was thinking around 2.5 and then around 1.5, it's like the the medium per, um, impact and things like yeah. that. So, yeah. However, if there end up being like 20 items that have three as the score, as the average score, then that, that itself might be a lot of work to absorb. And so we may not get down to the, the 2.5s. All right, um, so let's start, uh, I'm gonna start from the so, bottom. Sorry, one, I guess on that topic, uh, one, Comment is, I guess, I mean, if something seems like a bad idea, I guess we can decide we should definitely not do it. But for anything that seems useful, ultimately, isn't it a question of who is willing to commit the time and actually do implement it? Absolutely. I mean, all, all of the success of any of these items depends entirely on whether mm -hmm. someone is able and willing to spend the time to do it. Okay. So it's, it's more just the guidance for, so yeah, certainly, you know, if there's some, something that goes against the principles and, and is considered a bad idea, we want to eliminate those. Uh, right. But if there's something that is reasonable, but is maybe not as high priority for the overall community, but, you know, someone is willing to do it, that should be fine. Uh, but this is just to kind of give a um, rough idea where what the community feels is important as a bridge. All right. All right, so I'm, I'm, I was kind of working my way up from the bottom to find some ones that were fairly uh, bimodal, like high scores and low scores. 
So uh, if I'm looking at this right, I think the, the first one I kind of see is this one, change Onyx IR to multiple IRs and centralized IR optimization libraries. Um, so it looks like, uh, yeah, so we have a couple of ones, a couple of twos, a couple of threes. Um, and uh, yeah, Rama, you have some comment on this? Yeah, I was just wondering why those two are put together into one item. It seems like they are two different items, right? Optimization is different from how the IR is. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, when I, when I looked at it, I lumped them together before, uh, but they should, there should be broken into separate items, I think. Thank you, Arma. That may change some of the scores, because I was certainly reacting to parts of it in my score. And I think um, changing Onyx IR to multiple IRs, um, I, think, uh, I, I think I saw there was a talk submitted from IBM um, on the direction of MLIR alignment with the Onyx. And so I think that goes uh, pretty well with that. Jim, do you remember uh, who that person was? I can't remember exactly, but. Um, Kevin and Brian on would know. And okay. Kevin can also invite me to change my score on these two. So Kevin, I would follow your lead. <laughs> yeah, um, the, the speaker is Alex Eichenberger. Um, I think, right, Jim, you, you had contacted yeah, us. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's um, right. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can talk about the scoring. Uh, Do you want to okay. speak briefly yeah. about uh, what you feel is, you know, like, what, 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 we, what is the advantage of doing this? Just to make sure everyone's level set on that. Um, well, I, you know, I think there was uh, a, a feeling that in, in terms of the uh, Onyx IR that, um, you know, there were, there were uh, a lot of things that could be reduced to uh, kind of concatenation of sort of simpler ops. And that, so if you had a multi-level IR that that would assist in, in doing that. Um, I mean, so, some. I think maybe was it Harry that that made this proposal on on uh, on the Onyx MLIR um, at GitHub. I think so. But um, but that yeah, that was this kind of rationale. I I don't know that I personally have a really strong opinion on it. And when we say IR, um, are, are you referring to kind of the, the C++ implementation that's in Onyx today or, or something else? No, I think, okay. So I, what I interpret this is, is that it's the Onyx dialect in Onyx MLIR, which is not, not the implementation per se. It's, I see, this is specific to Onyx MLIR. That's what I interpret it as, because otherwise I don't know what is meant by an Onyx IR. But, you know, I mean, uh, whoever suggested it maybe uh, could, could clarify that. Yeah, I think it was, if I remember correctly, I think it was Ka, and then there was some other person who suggested it as well. And so. So, yeah, I also interpreted similarly. I, so I actually created a discussion elaborating this, I think, which is aligned with this Onyx MLI thing. So I pasted that link also in this chat right now. I, if I'm, and that was my interpretation. I, uh, I guess Kevin can also look at it and see if that's the same kind of interpretation here. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for starting that discussion. Uh, I guess you know, we, can, we can follow up on there and, and continue discussing this one. Uh, since we're splitting it, I don't know, people may want to probably change their scores. Uh, for, the, for the second part of this, a centralized IR optimization library um, uh, again, I don't know which of the previous scores kind of reflected this part as opposed to the other one. For me, like my score was uh, partly determined by this. Uh, and uh, my 
you know, my thinking is that the core Onyx doesn't have optimization libraries, right? We, we actually had a separate optimization uh, repo that we kind of split things off into and things can be done there. And, you know, if, if uh, it's important to someone to add these there, that's fine. Um, but it's, it's not part of the core uh, Onyx spec. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I I also agree with that. Like with the current optimizers that we have, we already have a lot of maintenance issue because uh, every time op specs are updated, we uh, we do not mandate that the optimizers be also updated, and this is uh, this has led uh, uh, to all the op like a lot of optimizers being in a in a buggy state right now. Okay, I know that there's a lot of uh, uh, optimization libraries that are out there. I think when we went to China last year, uh, there are two talks that are kind of talking about the optimization library that they built for the uh, Onyx IR. And so maybe we can actually, we don't have to centralize it, but maybe we can um, have like a, a place where we can kind of show that these are the tools that are available to the uh, people who are going to use Onyx instead of trying to centralize the IR optimization libraries. Actually, how I see this is optimizations should be part of the runtime. Uh, so different runtimes can uh, employ different techniques, right? So, I mean, in Onyx, we already have a lot of things to focus on and our, it will be more beneficial if we focus on the other stuff than uh, suggesting or centralizing optimizations because I don't see that the right place for optimization is uh, in Onyx repo. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It sounds like there's a lot of uh, agreement that this is lower priority and, and uh, people can enter their scores to, to reflect that. Um, all right, kind of working up the list, uh, Let's see other items that are divergent. Okay, introduce format for op reference implementation. Um, so this is, th I believe this is specifically about requiring uh, ops to be implemented in a specific way when adding the op to Onyx, right? Like saying, hey, it needs to, there needs to be a, I don't know, a Python implementation of it or something like that. Uh, part of that already exists today, I believe. I think we ask for a uh, pointer, right? To the code? Maybe Rama or Rishing, do you remember? Uh, yeah, so uh, to, to add new uh, apps today, we need to provide Python implementation for, for the added app. Uh, yes, but uh, the problem here is that they don't have a, a unified format. And when so, you say format, is it interface or yeah, like coding like the, style or what? Uh, it's a combined box. It's a, a standard interface and uh, coding style. There is uh, currently they just the, the uh, only uh, shared property between them is that they are all Python functions. That is it. Okay. And the Python implementation is used for testing purposes to validate the output? It's for uh, testing and uh, also uh, to, to, uh, to tell you so what the uh, text description in the spec means. Sometimes text description can be uh, ambiguous and uh, the implementation uh, can complement it. Okay. So I know earlier in one of the other meetings there was the discussion about whether this should be a requirement or not. Uh, I mean, the, the fact is that it is currently a requirement. And I think this line is basically a tweak on that saying it's already a requirement, but when you submit it, it needs to look a certain way. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. In that case, I mean, I think I would probably change my school, personal score here. Uh, yeah, I mean, fine. This seems like the kind of thing that if somebody creates a PR proposing specific style, if it seems acceptable, they can just accept it. I mean, 
I guess it's a question of somebody doing it. And then, yeah. yeah, and if we have a universal format for all of them, it, uh, actually we can have a small uh, non-optimal runtime uh, sitting in the Onyx repo. Yeah, see, that there is, uh, I think if we, until we are just talking about having a reference implementation, it completely makes sense to me for, for the reasons that you already mentioned. But the moment we start talking about having a simple runtime, I think we will get into, uh, we'll make this very complicated because uh, it, now you don't just need an implementation for all these operators. You need to have an execution flow and you need to have uh, an internal IR which can process the model and everything, right? Uh, I don't know if Onyx requires that sort of complexity. Like, I don't know what use case we will solve by having this IR implementation. Uh, sorry, having this, uh, uh, this sort of a simple runtime. It's mainly for test, testing programs. Um, it, testing it what? Uh, like, so for, uh, for example, you, you can have some uh, small models in your models and uh, for uh, Onyx training spec, it actually, uh, for example, it introduced a gradient up and that up can only be tested with other ups in a formal graph. It, it cannot be tested uh, uh, with a with with an up level test. Yeah, I mean, I I, I also think I mean it does have a value. I mean, I think uh, I don't know the question of how much effort and cost it is to implement is a valid question. Maybe that is uh, more debatable. But uh, but if you had a mechanism to simply run a Onyx model and evaluate it on an input, well, uh, it definitely has a value, right? As a, as a part of, uh, I mean, these are all different ways of expressing the semantics. Uh, it helps in testing, establishing equivalence and correctness and uh, resolving ambiguity and so on and so forth. So I think everything, uh, like everything related to the op itself, as in resolving uh, ambiguity or ensuring correctness and everything, that can be achieved by the op level testing. Function testing also, we, we've spoken about this before, that it can be achieved by using Onyx runtime to validate uh, the expanded functions. It's just this use case which Weixing mentioned right now regarding the gradient op that use case I'm not aware of, and I need to understand so, it better to say, like, uh, can we, can we, like, can we use, can we still use Onyx runtime for testing something like this? Yeah, it is just uh, taking tech testing to the next level, right? Uh, so if you have a, you have a unit tests for ops, but how do you know it is complete? How do you know? There is some corner case that is not covered by the reference implementations and the tests. Uh, when you start running complete models, you may suddenly reveal a gap where uh, there is a particular corner case that is not being handled. Right. Uh, I do agree that uh, Onyx on that can be uh, can be a, a replacement for for a small runtime. I just mentioned it's okay so, to use Onyx runtime. So Onyx runtime also has a way of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, plugging Python ops, right? I'm I, I'm not entirely uh, familiar with how or uh, whether it can, this can be used um, in the current scenario, but since we are already mandating that we have a Python implementation for every op, 
we can use onyx like we can use this to plug uh we can use this implementation for plugging in for a custom python op right and continue yeah, that's an using and continue using uh, because the issue the main issue is uh, when we add operators to onyx they are not available in onyx runtime or any other runtime for that matter so if it's just this matter of one or two ops that we are adding in a new offset then i think we should uh, we should see if the python op thing can be uh, utilized over here mm -hmm. yep i'm totally okay with uh, the idea of using uh, on onyx from time to to execute some uh, complete graphs yeah, I'm not totally okay with it. I, I just want to make sure uh, the definition of the apps are correct. Yeah, you, even that would require this standard interface uh, to ensure it's doable, right? So. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, so if we want to use Onyx from Netflix to the Python code here, the Python code you need to uh, meet the requirements uh, from Onyx from my Python app. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I still need to go and uh, check if it can be used in the way we are thinking. I haven't really used it myself. So, yeah, we can, like, one of us can go and... Uh... Yeah, for the Python op, actually, we, we, uh, we have some prototype. Uh, but, but this is a good idea that we can use a Python op to, to validate the, the op. So uh, the only limitation I think of is that Python app op is based on the custom of API. It doesn't include every schema that uh, as Onyx. So the schema validation may be the missing part for the whole pipeline. For the other purpose is totally fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds like a good item to follow up on and see how we can make use of it. If we want, you know, make use of these reference implementations. Um, all right, so now the other item I see where there's very divergent numbers is, is pre-processing. Um, so this one also is one I think we talked about briefly in one of the other meetings. Uh, and I can I can explain my score and then would love to hear from others as well. Um, so when, you know, when we talk to customers, uh, especially for customers who do not serve in Pythonic uh, environments, uh, they, they want their model to be self-contained and they, they like the idea of Onyx being portable but then it doesn't capture all the parts that are needed for the model so the pre-processing still needs to be done and outside of it so they find that it's very difficult uh, you know for, for that pre-processing to I mean, they basically have to go re-implement the pre-processing on different platforms and, and optimize that to work and so on and so from that perspective you know it would be nice to have more pre-processing capabilities inside the Onyx uh, graph, so it's it's more portable. So, so I have a sort of question about that. How um, how wide a set of pre-processing things are you sort of considering? Yeah, that's sort of that's the scaling you could do with tensor ops, but like tokenizing a, a bunch of text is a kind of a different problem. Exactly, and and that's why it's um, I don't think it's possible to cover all possible data transformations. Uh, but there may be some common ones. Uh, so image-based ones, you know, scaling and things like that. Uh, those, some of those are already in Onyx, but there may be some other ones that we need to look at adding. But you know, we need to take a closer look at the types of image models that are out there and, and see what kind of pre-processing they're doing, uh, especially with like bounding boxes and things like that. I don't think we, we handled those well. Uh, and then on the text models, uh, yeah, the tokenization, that's a much bigger, complicated set. Um, haven't looked into it in depth. Uh, I don't know if there's some common things that we might be able to abstract and, and make available uh, or whether it's just so, you know, independent for every, every scenario that we cannot. Uh, hi there, it's, it's Nick here, from, uh, Nick Pentry from IBM. Um, I know recently the TensorFlow community had a, um, uh, a kind of RF, RFC for uh, text processing, uh, including kind of BERT style uh, tokenization. Mm -hmm. It's pretty comprehensive, so that's something we might want to look at as you know, a potential guide for, for yep. the specifically the, the kind of text pre-processing tokenization aspect. It may be that we can support 
again, as I said, not not everything, but but a fairly wide range of uh, of kind of common use cases. Yeah, provided we were assuming that we're not training the pre-processing steps, right? The, because the, these these byte pairing coders or word piece encoders are trained tokenizers, but the the algorithm to do the tokenization, I think, is pretty straightforward once you've learned. Yeah, it. definitely. I think the assumption would be that it's it's a it's a you know they're all they're all kind of export only. You know, for for I mean, obviously, if it's simple tokenization like white space or regex or uh, character based or something, then then that's kind of fine. But yeah, for for the um, the bird style, uh, it would be like yeah, exporting the pre-trained tokenizer. I, I I just um, like to say that pre-processing on the data frame uh, as input output up at the top. Um, I think those are probably also linked. I mean, at least uh, some of the interest that we have in the data frame is precisely for you know uh, uh, some kind of pre-processing before your model. So is there some way we can group these? things together or merge them somehow? No, um, I mean, from, from my perspective, I would say, I mean, I definitely agree that the, the data frame stuff is kind of linked to pre-processing, but I think data frame as a, da as a kind of new, new data type or a new abstraction is, is probably a, a bit of a separate, um, a separate entity in terms of, uh, you know, what's, what's required and the work involved. Um, so definitely linked, but I, I guess probably a little bit different. Yeah, that, that's, so I guess that was you could my view on it. Pre-processing ops, let's say for example, a tokenization operator, which, which is effectively going to work, uh, you know, row wise across a column of a data frame, but then the, the data frame abstraction itself as a bag of, of columns or whatever cells or whatever you want to, you know, whichever way you kind of want to look at it is, is something slightly different. And it, and it would have, you know, a map operator that maps uh, the, the pre-processing operator itself across the, the rows of a column. So I guess at a high level, that's the separation of, 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 of abstraction there. Yeah, I, I guess I see that, but I, I just, I think that, you know, some of the rationale for but both of these things is is, uh, is similar, and maybe we should look at them in uh, conjunction. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I agree that they are very closely linked. So we're we're at time for this session. Uh, so thank you all for the input and the discussions. Uh, feel feel free to add your own columns to this uh, with your scores for this. Um, I think an action item is um, we're gonna. Uh, I'd like to turn this into something more actionable, like uh, probably some of these need like uh, uh, RFC or something written, uh, you know, describing uh, what, what exactly we're proposing. Um, so I'll work with uh, Harry and, and other uh, student committee members offline to, you know, kind of turn this into something like that so we can um, start making progress on some of these things. Uh, and also follow up with like the Model Z folks, for example, um, you know, see what, we, what the plans are uh, there. Um, Okay, uh, we're one minute over, so we'll end the meeting at this time. Thanks, everyone.